The Dallas Mavericks, led by Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson, are making a dominating comeback in their playoff series with two straight wins, while the Phoenix Suns are wondering what's going wrong. The Dallas Mavericks have rocked the boat for the number one team in the West. Jalen Brunson came back to his first round form and put up a game-high 28-point performance in Game 3 while Reggie Bullock, who has been shooting lights out since the start of the playoffs, had 15 points going 40% off the three-point line, while Dorian Finney-Smith had eight threes in Game 4. All of them have contributed massively on the defensive end as well, but Doncic would still be the MVP of both games with a game-high plus 20 in the plus-minus column. Today's video will be about how Luka and the Dallas Mavericks can beat the Phoenix Suns to advance to Western Conference Finals. The difference was Luka finally got some offensive production from his supporting cast these past two games. Doncic scored 26 points in both games, and the Dallas Mavericks turned up the defensive pressure to get back in their Western Conference semifinal series with Phoenix beating the Suns 111-101 on Sunday night. Before we begin today, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Let's keep rolling! What do you know? Luka has teammates. Through games 1 and 2, Luka Doncic was averaging 40.0 points per game, while Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie were only averaging 20.5 points per game. It is also worth mentioning that outside of Doncic, the Mavericks struggled to find consistency on offense in the first two games of this series. In game Games 3 and 4, though, Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock, and others turned up the heat. The supporting cast around Luka Doncic stepped up with 71 combined points in Game 3, and this proved to be a massive difference in favor of Dallas, especially since these four players shot 11 and 30, 36.7% from deep. The key question being asked heading into this matchup in Dallas was whether or not someone else would step up for the Mavericks, and it seemed like all of the role players around Doncic took this question to heart. Every single player that needed to step up for the Mavericks stepped up in Game 3 as well as Game 4. But now, heading into Game 5, the questions being asked will revolve around whether or not they will be able to do it again. Role players tend to play better at home, and the Mavericks need to keep up their momentum as they head back to Phoenix. Physicality is Phoenix's kryptonite. From the opening tip of both games, the Mavericks played with a certain level of intensity that was not matched by the Suns at really any point in these games. Phoenix would go on some scoring runs and ramp things up a little bit on their end of things to try and cut into Dallas's lead, but the Mavs controlled every aspect from the first minute to the last. It was very clear that the Mavericks wanted these games more than the Suns, and they truly needed it more than them as well, since they faced a 0-2 deficit. Phoenix was not ready for a fistfight in Game 3 and 4 after beating Dallas by double digits in the first two games of the series, and that was very apparent with their lackluster play on the offensive end of the floor. Chris Paul turned the ball over a total of seven times, all of which came in the first half of the game, marking the first time he has ever turned the ball over six or more times in a half of a playoff game, per ESPN stats and info. Maybe this was just the Suns being unprepared for this game and thinking they could go to Dallas and run all over the Mavericks, as they did through the first two games of this series. But the physicality of the Mavericks has seemed to really bother the Suns, especially when Phoenix was not getting the foul calls they wanted. Defense wins championships, and both of these teams are two of the best defensive teams in the entire NBA. The Mavericks offense is efficient when they attack the rim. A lot a lot of the Dallas Mavericks' offensive sets this season have revolved around giving the ball to Luka Doncic and getting out of the way. These isolation sets have resulted in some success, but in the playoffs, specifically against the Suns, Dallas's offense has been very stagnant. Luka can only do so much for this team, and he alone is not going to be able to carry them in the series, this being very apparent after he scored a combined 80 points in games 1 and 2, and Dallas still got outscored by a combined 27 points. Getting others involved and moving the ball was essential for the Mavericks to do in games 3 and 4, and they did just that. They were able to get more open looks, specifically from the three-point line, by moving the ball around, and instead of standing around, Dallas looked to constantly attack the holes in Phoenix's defense. This has left the Suns looking frazzled defensively, and because of how fast they were having to play on defense, Phoenix was not able to save all their energy for the offensive end of the floor. The Suns ended up getting tired on defense because of all the adjustments and switches they had to make giving the Mavericks the upper hand in this game. The Dallas Mavericks are not that strong of an offensive team, and everything flows through Luka Doncic. 
But by moving the ball and finding the gaps to attack in the Suns' defense, the Mavs have given themselves a fighting chance in this series. Devin Booker was not impressed with Luka Doncic's defense in Game 2. Doncic struggled defensively in that game, and the Phoenix Suns attacked him mercilessly in the second half. The Dallas Mavericks gave Booker some of his own medicine in Game 3. Booker has become a solid defender. While he does not need to carry a similar offensive load as Doncic due to the Suns' depth, he is an incredibly important part of their offense. That makes attacking him on the defensive end an important part of the Mavericks' offense. The Mavericks did not shoot well from outside, which is why it is unsurprising that the Mavericks were 0 of 7 on threes with Booker credited as the primary defender per NBA.com. Those misses were due to the Mavericks simply missing more than good contests from Booker. The Mavericks were relentless in attacking the basket though, and that is where they hurt Booker. The Mavericks were 9 of 7 on twos defended by Booker. It would be difficult to shoot that well in an empty gym. In at least one case, after Jalen Brunson bodied Booker into the stanchion, Brunson was essentially in an empty gym despite a mild contest from DeAndre Ayton. The most aggressive player in attacking Booker was Brunson, who had his best game of the series. Brunson had 28 and 18 points in games 3 and 4 respectively, after averaging 11 points per game in games 1 and 2. This level of aggression from Brunson will need to continue as he really stepped it up. Doncic is the better player, but he is at his best when Brunson is playing well. Brunson was not the only one to attack Booker though. Booker was one of the many defenders whom Doncic took into the post. Doncic is simply too skilled, big and strong for any of the Suns' perimeter defenders other than perhaps Jay Crowder. This work of pivoting beauty is the perfect example of the best way for Doncic to get in on attacking Booker. The final member of the Mavericks to get in on the act of attacking Booker was none other than Maxi Kleber. Kleber had a truly phenomenal Game 3. He showcased a level of versatility offensively which is incredibly impressive for a center. One facet of that versatility was this attack of a half-hearted closeout from Booker. Kleber had a bigger statistical game in Game 2 against the Utah Jazz because he made more threes, but this was the most impressive offensive game of his career. He made pull-up twos, spot-up threes, duck-in layups, and a driving dunk on Booker. Adjustments are going to be made night in and night out, and Jason Kidd and Dallas made all of the correct adjustments both before and during Game games 3 and 4. Whether or not they can make the correct adjustments after the games and heading into Game 5 this week though is a key question. And what do you guys think? Can the Mavs eliminate the Suns? Who will step up and help Luka? I would love to hear your opinion, so let me know what you think in the comments.